In Seattle, the state's largest school district, it still plans to open some classrooms on March 1st, but first parents being asked to give their input about whether they will allow their student to return to in-person learning. Joining us now this morning, Seattle School Superintendent Denise Juno, live on King 5 Mornings. Uh, lots to catch up on, Ms. Superintendent. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Jake. Good morning. Good to see you. Um, so you have announced that the plan is to restart in-person learning for students on March 1st for kindergarten, first grade, special education students, and preschool. Tell us about why you're sending this survey this week. Sure, so as you know, the governor and the state superintendent recently put out new guidance for schools to reopen and reopen safely with a responsible plan. And so we've been engaged in making such a plan, working with our school board, working with our stakeholders, and this is the first step for our phased reopening. And so we will be sending out a survey today to um, pre-K parents, um, kindergarten families, and first grade families as well, where we will start with our youngest learners, as well as those um, students who are in our special education moderate and intensive pathways. So all together, that's about 9,000 students across the district that will be receiving a survey. It goes out today we'll, and basically we'll be asking whether you want to come back in person beginning March 1st or whether you want to stay remote. And we need that information so that we can configure our classrooms and our buildings to make sure that we are there prepared and um, ready to um, bring in the students that want to come back. Yeah, it's a tough decision for a lot of families. It just worst case scenario, a child in a classroom, say for example, gets the virus or the teacher gets infected. What's the protocol right now as you know it uh, to have as little disruption as possible? Well, that, that's a bummer. All right. So. Oh, so no, we are um, putting we're we're putting in a lot of um, mitigation and in order to mitigate as much risk as possible. So we are we've cleaned all our HVAC systems. We where it's not may may not be meeting standard in those very rare cases. We will be putting in HEPA filters into the classrooms, particularly. We are increasing our cleaning protocols. Um, so we're going to, you know, we're looking to hire more custodians to make sure that things get cleaned. We are doing as much as we can. Classroom, so there will be enough safety precautions taken to mitigate as much risk as possible. We'll be doing daily attestations of both students and, and staff um, and, and tracking and making sure. And, you know, we are hoping that teachers remain at the top uh, at one of the priority lists for the vaccine. And we'll be pushing that issue as well. While I have you, Superintendent, uh, we want to ask about your recent uh, and abrupt decision to retire in June after three years in Seattle. Uh, this after the school board signal that may not re-up your contract. Some community groups claim that they, uh, the support for you has been waning. Was this a hard decision for you to announce your resignation? Yeah, I mean, it was a very difficult decision because we've done some great work. And, you know, my request to the public really is to look beyond rumors and innuendos and really dig into the information that of, of the work that we've been doing. I mean, for example, we, you know, we increased the uh, students of color graduating from high school 5.5 percentage points. And so when we look at our numbers, the creation of an office of African American male achievement, actually living and implementing our strategic plan. Next, um, superintendent that is chosen by the school board is able to uh, be here long term and be able to carry out that vision. But there's a lot of great work to build on. We've kept equity at the front of our mind in all of our decisions, even in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and so there's a lot to build on for the next superintendent. Some connection issues there. I think we got most of what you said, but I, I want to bring this to your attention as well. You've likely seen this on the heels of what you just said. This from the local chapter of the NAACP Youth Council. I want to read this part of the editorial they wrote. It's very striking saying we aren't asking for perfection. We're asking for an anti-racist leader to lead our school district who centers students' voices and experiences especially when black and brown students are the ones sitting at these desks, receiving the short end of the stick. This is bigger than terminating the superintendent's contract. What is it that people aren't understanding about your time as superintendent? Well, I think, you know, that, that's part of the thing is like social media, um, a lot of, um, you know, the stories that roll out from media sometimes cast a negative light on the district. And 
we have a really difficult time of making sure that our story gets told and the story is a good one. Um, as I said, we can look at a lot of data that needs to be improved where we are falling short. We are putting a lot of, like we are working on transform, transforming our human resource processes and have done a lot of work to make sure that we are setting new standards and new expectations for staff um, across the district. Um, and so those kinds of things take time. And I know everything in this period is urgent and important. Um, and we see that and we hear people um, and we want to make sure that we are being held accountable by, by all of our stakeholders. And so we continue to move in a forward direction. We, uh, as you know, have a really strong, bold strategic plan that is based in racial equity. And we continue to live that strategic plan in all the decisions that we do. I have to ask as well, you came to Seattle knowing that this job, superintendent of Seattle schools is kind of a revolving door. Is it just an impossible job now? You know, I think school district leaders across the country particularly in um, the pandemic and having to make a big switch to remote learning, trying to figure out a return to in-person learning. Um, it is really an impossible job. I mean, there is going to always be a lot of people who are dissatisfied with any decision that gets made. And so it just puts an extra sheen of, um, of difficulty on, onto, onto the work that we're doing. However, I do think in Seattle, I, I hope that there, you know, that people figure out how you're going to keep a leader along, uh, around long term because it takes a long time. It takes a long time to steer the ship, to steer an organization this large, particularly in the direction when you are taking on racial equity issues head on like we are doing, living our strategic plan. Um, it's going to take some time. And so hopefully the board chooses a superintendent that they can um, work with long term and and build on the successes that we've had over the last two and a half years. 